I told you two weeks ago that we're talking about today and God has kept it that way. Do you remember? No. It's fine. After today, we'll remember. Okay, guys, I want you to turn with me, please, to 1 Samuel 16. We're going to be busy with 1 Samuel 16 and 17 mostly. The other verses I'll just jump around. Okay, 1 Samuel 16 and 17 mostly. 1 Samuel, Old Testament, 1 Samuel 16, 17, 1 Samuel. Right. Guys, 1 Samuel 16 is without a doubt one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Because it's the story of how God chose a shepherd boy, a shepherd boy, to become the greatest king of all times, next to Jesus. The story of how God chose a young kid covered in mud, smelling of sheep, to be the greatest king probably that humanity has ever seen. Right, so 1 Samuel 16 is how um, Samuel had to go and he had to go to Jesse's um, house and he had to ask to see the boys. And we know the story, I think I've done a message on this before. Um, 1 Samuel 16, 7, we. we Samuel looks at all these boys and he says, wow, that one must be the one. He's handsome, he's big. Remember that? He's good looking, you know, he looks like a king. And then God says in verse 7, you're looking at the outside. I look at the heart. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, but now we're taking it up from a different point today. Verse 13, 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. We're going to start here, but I want you to keep this at the back of your mind. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Sixteen years old, he was anointed with oil. The Spirit of God came upon him and he was anointed with power. Are you with me? Some of you are frowning. Lexi, are you okay? Okay. So the Spirit of God was on David. He was anointed with oil and he didn't just have the Spirit of God, he had power to go with that. Right. Now we're going to look at the story of David and Goliath. And it's sad because a lot of people think this is a Sunday school story. It's not. This should be like a, a PG-16 language of Bible, so much even else for me. This, now if you're telling me that my God is boring, wow, you better read my Sunday school I think that when people think about action movies and that kind of thing, they'll probably think of stuff like this. Now they're moving out Jack and the Giant Slay and stuff. David and Goliath, hello. That was the first of those stories. Right. Power. Mystery. Intrigue. Action. Blood. Gore. Whatever else you want. God is the original screenwriter. You should get the Oscar every year. Best original screenplay. Woman comes out of wheelchair. Best original screenplay, I'll be covered in gold teeth. <laughs> Best original screenplay, whatever, whatever, whatever. We should give God Oscars every year, man. Forget about all this other garbage out there. Right. So 1 Samuel 17, classic story, David and Goliath. We all covered in that picture, didn't we? Yeah. As a kid, we all did. But now let's, let's unravel it, let's unturn your stone. Hey, before I read you that, I want you to keep the scripture in your mind. Uh, Ephesians 6.12. For the battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against forces and principalities and, 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 and dark authorities. Remember that. The battle is not against flesh and blood. Right. So I don't have David and Goliath. I'm going to start from 17. Are you with me? Yes. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at so called They pitched their camp, blah, blah, blah. So and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Elah and drew up their battle line to meet the Philistines. Okay? Regular, you know, we've got, we've got a war going on. Verse 4 A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. He was over nine feet. Guys, that's huge. Nine feet? Huge. I'm about five foot. Okay? Yeah, yeah, nine feet is the guy I was just about to say. The, the guys you see in WWE, those guys have about the six feet long. Imagine the guy putting in a big show if you used to watch that, right? So now we've got this huge 
wants to rob a man. He's a champion. He's obviously some sort of gladiator or something, right? Sure, you might should be watching you action junkies. Or <laughs> because the stage is set now for something cool. There's a war. There's two sides. There's Saul and the Israelites. And there's this champion named Goliath who's three meters tall. The average tall is two meters. Right. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves and bronze javelin slung on his back. Wow. This guy looks the part, doesn't he? Yes, some people weigh more than I Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's three meters. He can afford to put a couple out on him, just as his clothes. Right, so he looked the part. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod, and his iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went to hit the So even as people to help carry some of his armor, that's how much stuff he's got. Wow. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? Are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me if he's able to fight and kill me. We will become your subjects, and I, if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. So what do we have now? We've got the challenge. So we've got the two ranks, we've got the champion who's presented, and the champion is laying down the challenge. How many movies have you seen of like this? Right? Like Troy. Troy, yeah. Gladiator, all these, all these epic movies, right? Are you with me? Yes. Right. Then the Philistines said, verse 10, this day I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Right. The people of Israel and their king, they are shocked, they are left speechless, they are terrified because of a few words from the giant. But that's cool. We'll forgive them, right? I'm just going to skip a bit. I'm just going to paraphrase, right? So David, we know 16 years old, I think at the stage was maybe 17. Um, his father sends him out to go and give his brother some bread and, and some food and stuff because three of his brothers were in the Israelite army, right? Israeli army, right? So David was the youngest, verse 14. The three oldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tell his father's sheep in Bethlehem. Okay, um, I'm jumping ahead. Verse 23. So David is talking to his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance at David at it. When the Israelites saw the man, they all ran from him in great fear. They all ran from him in great fear. Now the Israelites have been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will, will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage, blah, blah, blah. Verse 26. David asked the men standing near him, What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? A 17-year-old boy is asking soldiers in the army of King Saul, Who is this that dare, dare criticize my God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. Okay? Verse 32, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine, your servant will go and fight him. Sure. Now it gets better. Maybe we've got two sides, we've got a giant, we've got a challenge, we've got people running and hiding, and now we've got a 17 year old boy saying, don't fear. It's all good. Call the king. Let's sort this out now, once and for all. Okay, verse 34, But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When he turned on me, I seized it by its head, struck it, and killed it. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be careful, you enemy the devil who walks around like a lion. Mm -hmm. No, we use lions. Bad lions. We look their heads off. You struck in the bones, and that's it. That's what David says. When the lions come and the bears come to carry the sheep off, I went off it and rescued it from its mouth. He turned on me, but I killed it. 17 year old boy. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. 
because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the poor of the lion and the poor of the bee will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. Can I just point out that Saul is the king at this stage? He is the king, he is the commander in chief of Israel and of this army, and he's happy to say, Okay, 17 year old boy, you go. Go on with you, I'm out of here. Okay? But we'll talk about his cowardice just now. Saul dressed David in his own tunic, he put on the coat of armor, bronze helmet on his head. David fastened the sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go and release, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off, then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with the sling in his hands he approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods, Come here, he said, and I'll give you your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I'll give you the cock, give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Mm -hmm. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give all of you into our hands. Oscar stuff? Yeah. <laughs> This is the best screenplay, the best movie ever. As the Philistine moved closer to attack David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone stamp, sorry, sank into his forehead and he fell face down to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Out of sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Okay. Cool story. Very yeah. awesome story and very, very, very relevant for us today. How many of us are facing Goliath at the moment? How many of us are facing challenges that just seem unbelievable, that seem unbeatable? So we're going to learn from the story today. We're going to learn what it means to say, whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind. The God of angel arms is always by my side. Mm -hmm. We need to know what that song means by the end of this. Because giants, whatever. Three giants, whatever. You guys, you guys know that the last two brothers were behind him at this stage, right? Did you know that? He was just the big mouth. The other two were just chilling, but they were almost as big as him. Doesn't matter whether it's one, whether it's three, whether it's three thousand. The Lord God Almighty is on your side. And that is why David had no fear. He didn't even blink. He's like, who is this monster who dares say anything against my God, against my people? And how many of you are facing that right now? How many of you are facing a challenge that's so big that for 40 days or longer you, you run and hide every time you see it? You run and hide every time you hear about it. And that's what the devil does. Intimidation. Is there all the spirits involved here? Number one, fear. We're talking about the spirit of the line today, so we're talking about the spirit of fear that comes from these things that we face. Everyone is happy, right? Even we have two lines. We know. The battle is not against flesh and blood, right? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6 12. There's two sides. Pastor Al always talks about two kingdoms. So there's the two sides. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden we've got an extra surprise because we've got a Goliath. How many of us cower away because of the Goliath? We've got a king standing there. We've got our battle ranks. We've got the armor of God on, we've got the sword, but then the Goliath comes and we drop everything and we kick it. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Fear is the 
the enemy's number one tactic. You think you, you, you collide, reach and stood there, kind of smiled and waved at them, they would run away? Probably not. But the enemy doesn't smile and wave at you, does he? He uses fear, intimidation, perseverance. Guys, you think the devil's just going to come once or twice and try and run away? No. Goliath was here for 40, 40 days. He mocked the people. The enemy doesn't stop. But we have to persevere just as much. We have to believe to stand firm just as much as he's standing there taunting us. Taunting who we are. Taunting the righteousness of God. Taunting the power that we have through the Holy Spirit. And when we do, we drop everything and we run because it's scary. Why is it scary? Because we all think. What did David do? Did David stand here and think and judge and come back after three days? No, he picked up the stones and he ran and he sliced it down. He's not all confident in this, guys. David had the Spirit of God on him, which means, as it said in verse 16, 13 there, that the Spirit came, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he had power. Do you have power? Yes. Then why are you running? Do you have power? Yes. Then why are you trembling in the face of Goliath? Do you have the Spirit of God on you? Yes. Then what's the problem? And you know that thing about the enemy in your life? He's well prepared. These guys were well prepared. All dressed up and ready for battle. We as Christians need to get more prepared. We need to stop just lining up here on a Sunday and expect to fight Goliath. Because Goliath's not going anywhere. The Israelites came and went every single day. They saw him, they ran, and he said they saw him, they ran. Did, did Goliath go anywhere? No, he stood there for 40 days, taunting, insulting, filling them with fear. The enemy's not going anywhere, and we come once, once a week. We come and we chill, okay, cool down, feel a bit power. What do we do in the rest of the time? Where's our weapons? Goliath had an armor bearer. The enemy's well organized. Lots of little minions and whatever around to help. We need to know who we are. We need to know who our God is. So we too, like David, can run and say, In the name of Almighty God, I cut you down. Whatever. Guys, we always we joke about this. You know the armor of God, Ephesians 6, right? Mm -hmm. You know all the pieces. There's no piece for you about Because you're not meant to fight like this. There's no peace for your bum because you're not meant to run away. There's no peace for your bum because you're not meant to be afraid of anything. Because you have the God of angel armies on your side. Doesn't matter about intimidation. Doesn't matter how big the Goliath looks. Doesn't matter how impressive the army is. Stone. Slung by the power of the Holy Spirit. Got through that bronze helmet. You don't have to come to Pastor Alan Iron, you know, if you have a problem. You've got power. The Spirit of God is on you. Remember we did that whole sermon on Isaiah 60. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on you. Remember that. Stand firm then in the times of battle. Stand firm in times of intimidation. Stand firm in the times of, of fear. Know who your God is. Know who your God is. Because if you know who your God is, the giant is nothing. Because if you know who your God is, 40 days worth of intimidation shouldn't count. Because if you know who your God is, you know you have the Holy Spirit on you, which means that you have power to sling down giants in your life. Did David say it anything to do with his weapons? No. He said the battle is the Lord's. Which means what? We don't have to fight. The victory is ours. Remember the camp, guys? What was our theme of the camp? The honor of God. You guys built the most amazing home 
pieces. We were, we were get ready. We are these soldiers. We are these warriors. Yes. 
Amen. the sweet smelling presence of King Jesus in our lives. And that is what we focus on. Forget about the monster in front of you. He'll eventually run out of steam. Maybe move on to another uh, fool that he can attack. Don't allow yourself to be a fool by running away. Your bum is empty. There's no peace there. And it's very embarrassing. <laughs> very embarrassing to claim that you have got major armies on your side, but you are running for the hills at the first sign of trouble. Stand firm. Stand firm. In your battle? No. In your victory. Stand firm in the victory that Jesus got for you on the cross. Last week, um, I got a very, very strong word. A lot of people are living like Jesus slain in there. Guys, the cross is big and the tomb is empty. Glad. Which means we have victory. Amen. Do you believe that you have victory today? Yes. While you're running around like the soldiers of Israel. Mm -hmm. You have victory. Say it with me, I am victorious. I am victorious. Wow. That's going to take some convincing. <laughs> Of which, as you can look around you, you 
again. Do you know him? Jesus is victorious. Jesus has crushed and destroyed the lions and the bears and the monstrosities and the Goliaths in our lives. Let's live like that. Let's celebrate that. Like I went off and struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. You are all here because Jesus went after you. Yes, the friend brought you cool. Why did that friend bring you? Because Jesus stirred something up in your heart. You are not here by accident, people. You are even if I, even if the rose into I was preaching to myself, I'd be telling myself that you are not here by accident. You are here because one, much greater than anything, went over hills and valleys and thorns and nails and torture and whooping to find you. Amen. That is why you are here. Free from the clutches of darkness. Free from the very pits of whatever. Because of your shepherd. Because of the one who doesn't fear. Anything. Because of the one who got victory. And he says, Yes, I rescued my sheep. Yes, Lord, yes, Daddy. Here they are, here are the sheep. I rescued them. Yes, Daddy, I love them so much. Yes, it was difficult being down on that earth all that long. But yes, Daddy, I love them so much. That's why I went after them. I love them so much. That is why I did all I did for them. And you know what, Daddy? Let's give them an extra present. Let's give them power. So that they can continue doing what I did. Mm-hmm. You know what, Daddy? They're so awesome. I love them so much. Let's just give them a piece of us. So they too can strike down the things in their lives. I showed them how, Daddy. I showed them. Verse 
and soldiers stayed in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. They would fasten the sword, then he said, no, I can't, I can't wear this. I can't wear earthly armor. I can't wear really things that human beings can give me. I don't need human beings' approval. I don't need human beings' whatever. I've got the Holy Spirit inside of me. Take all this garbage off. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit Amen. of God will I get victory. Not by pools, not by bulletproof vests, not by electric fences, but by the God and angel armies will I go on in this life. So we'll just see to the 17 year old, okay, good luck, I'm gone, I'm out of here. The spirit of Saul is very much alive in this world today. And it's a spirit of cowardice. It's a spirit of, 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 of fear. It's a spirit of giving other people your work to do. The spirit of Goliath is operation, operating. And so is the spirit of Saul. The spirit of Saul is very much alive. Because we look the part, don't we? We look, we, we, we look like good Christians, sure. We look good, man. And we've got nice Bibles, and we smell good, we, you know, we say nice stuff. We quote scriptures every now and again, but when trouble comes, we really want to keep the 17-year-old job to do. Forget about the life. What about the lives we have about ourselves? Saul was technically king at that time. He was, he was king. He was the commanding chief of the armies. But what happened? He had forgotten who his God is. Forget about positions. Forget about titles. Forget about whatever. If you do not, not know who you are in God, if you do not know the victory that you have in Jesus, stay at home. Stay at home. Become a couch potato. Let the spiders grow weeds around you. Because we are called to action. We are called to action. We are called to action. We are not called to life. We are called to a life of victory. Not a life of fear. Not a life of cowardice. We are called to a life of victory, people. Not a life of cowardice and cowering away and looking how we can get someone else to do God's work in our lives. Call God, don't call me. Rise up, church. Rise up, armies of God. Take your rightful place. It is not even the place opposite the enemy. The enemy is not your equal. How can something who is defeated be your equal? Things are happening. Yes. I want to be where I am stirred up 
life of God. And I wake up in the morning and I say, yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. Bring on the giants because I'm hungry. Bring on the giants because I'm tired of this nonsense. The loser's call is not for you. Know that now. Right. Verse 45. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. What do you need? Do you need fancy words? Do you need to go to Bible school and study for a hundred years? No. You need to know who you are. By knowing who your God is. You need to know who you are and know what it means. If you don't want to ask God for revelation, Lord, what did Jesus' victory on the cross mean for me living here today? Know who you are. I know who you are. I come against you. I come against you, Satan. Defeated foe in the name of Jesus. The one who defeated you. The greater I am. The God of the angel armies. I do not fear. It almost doesn't make sense to the head. Like if you're watching one of these cool movies that I've been talking about it, and there's the two sides or whatever, whatever. And the one side is already won, right? They already won. But the other side that runs away. <laughs> What's that about? Mm -hmm. You think, okay, some of the few pages of the movie got mixed up. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself anymore, guys. Don't embarrass yourself anymore. You are victorious. You are victorious. You have the power of Almighty God on the inside of you. You have the name of Jesus as your tool. You have the armor of God, salvation, truth, righteousness, all of those things. There's no armor for you, God. There's no armor for you, God. Because we're not meant to run away. We're not meant to run away because there's nothing for us to fight for really. We're not meant to run away because victors don't run away. Losers run, yeah. Winners don't. Have you ever seen a winner who doesn't want to eat their gold medal? It's weird, eh? Big, big bizarre. Guys give you a gold medal, people want to celebrate, they want to enjoy it, and he wants to run away. Doesn't make sense. Why would he do that? He's a winner. You are winners. Stand firm. Stand firm in Jesus' victory. This day the Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down and cut your feet. We need to start being aggressive with the problems now. We're too friendly. We're too friendly with challenges. We're too friendly with difficulties. And that's why they persevere and they torture us for 40 days and 40 nights or however long the period is. You know why? Because we're too tolerant. We're too tolerant of the fear that the enemy brings. We're too tolerant of intimidation. We're too tolerant of, 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 of the, the, the heartache and the pain and whatever. Get up tomorrow morning and say, whatever comes my way, whatever comes my way, I will stand firm in my victory, giant, I'll chop off your head. Because my Jesus has got victory over you. Which means I have victory over you. This day, the Lord will hand you over to now strike me down and cut off your head. Spirit of low self esteem, I am cutting off your head. Be gone. Spirit of fear, be gone. Spirit of jealousy, be gone. Whatever, 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 be gone, be gone, be gone. Because I know who my God is. Amen. Verse 47 All those who gather here will know that it is not by the sword or the spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give all of you into our hands. 
as the Philistines moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly. He ran quickly. He didn't hesitate because there's no need to hesitate. What are you, what are you thinking about? You already won. Where's the doubt? Spread of doubt, your head is coming off too. You already get the sword, he's chopping ears off. Ears, nose, eyes, gone. Reaching into his bed, taking out a stone. Next week, guys, I'm giving you a whole sermon on the five stones by the way. So we continue with this. I'm going to be talking about what the stones symbolize. He took out one stone, sank it into his forehead, and he fell face down on the mountain. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him, he took out the Philistine's sword, and drew it from the scabbard. After he killed him, he cut off his head with his sword. God is boring? Yeah. God is boring? Yeah. If you're boring, you deal with it. <laughs> I mean, there's a pull for that yet, but if there is, you can then find it. Anti boring pull. My God is very exciting. Our lives should be very exciting. Because our lives are lives of victory. We must enjoy it. We must run into the battlefield and say, Giant, what? You going down. <laughs> Next day, oh, your brother, fight. Third day, how oh, your family stick, man? All slow learners. Watch out. <laughs> down. Why? Because we have victory. Victory through Jesus. Victory through Jesus. Victory. Not fear. Intimidation. Perseverance. Doesn't matter how professional the enemy is and he is. He knows how to torture us, isn't it? He knows how to terrorize us day after day, night after night. But you know what? You allow it. You allow it. If one of those men, or one of Saul himself, had gotten up and struck down the Philistine, there wouldn't be such a cool story. But they allowed all that to happen. Because they saw a challenge, they saw a difficulty, and the power of who their God is, troops, out the mind, gone. Don't be that person. Don't be that person who runs and hides and trembles. That's a defeated, really worm. That's all the enemy is. See, it's just the tail's just about, just about going, just about, just about. But it's organized. But you know what? Jesus is victorious. Jesus is victorious. So we are victorious. Your choice, people. Your choice. The spirit of your life is very much alive and operating. We outside, no, in the church. The spirit of Saul, coward, fear. Saul was it was very. Uh, it was a man of little. Um, I want to say meat, but that wouldn't make sense. Character, character. Little character. And that's why I was full of fear. Don't be, don't be a Christian like Saul. Of little character. Be a David. Why be David? Because the Spirit of God was in David. And the Spirit of God is in you. Run into the battlefield. Charge him before you even get to start singing your victory songs. To remind yourself of who you are. Say no to the spirit of Goliath, no to the spirit of Saul, and yes to the spirit of God. Haven't you had enough people? Haven't you had enough of the fear, the intimidation, the torture? Haven't you had enough of running? Have you had enough of, of that, that feeling of being a coward? Have you had enough? There's no need to go on. 
Ich glaube schon, vielleicht ist es wirklich laut, wenn man das Wort muss, ich hoffe, ich laut und weit. Die Enemy ist laut. Die Enemy ist laut in der Hand. But you have the power to silence it. You have the power to silence those lies. You have the power to go the way of the shepherd. The shepherd who is truth, who is life, who is strength. Would you ever be choked up by a bee? The clutches of the bee in the wild are not so nice. But you don't have to be there. The torture and the fear and the perseverance of it. Sometimes we always feel like we're under attack, isn't it? People actually feel, oh, I'm under attack, I'm under attack, I'm under attack. Why? Why are you under attack? Don't you know who you are? Why are you allowing the text to come? Chase them. Yes, some of them are thick, but keep chasing them. That's why uh, David took five stones. In case the first one, maybe we now think a light it was. Um, maybe he needed two stones, maybe he needed three stones, but it doesn't matter. Eventually, and always, they will go. Eventually, and always, we will be able to dance through Jesus in the victory that we already have. But it's going to take us shooting the stone. It's going to take us doing our little bit. Is a stone a little pebble a big thing? No, because our little part is so little. Why? Because the job is done. The job is done. Jesus is chilling because his job was perfect. Do your little bit. Take your little stone. How much longer are you going to stand and allow that monster to terrorize you? The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Are you going to live like one who has the spirit of Almighty God inside, or are you going to live with the spirit of soul? Coward. No character. Fearful. Thank you. 